Hi, I'm Christy Friesen and I'm here to make a mess. Would you like to make a mess with me? Because we are going to play with Swelligant today. Swelligant is a system of metal coatings, patinas, dyes, and a few other odds and ends that lets you put a metal coating on any material and turn it into the look of metal and especially the look of aged metal. It is a series of metals, and this is a metal coating that is a pulverized metal like brass, copper, that sort of thing in a clear base that you can coat things with. There are patinas that work with the metal coating or on actual metals, but patinas oxidize your metal. We'll talk all about that. There's a bunch of dyes. There's 13 different colors that you can use to color your metal from the inside out, whether that be metal coating or actual metal. Then there's a prep and a sealer product. We'll talk all about that. I've Got everything spread out. I've got my handy dandy gloves on because we are going to embrace the chaos today. This whole system is chaotic in the sense that you can't really predict what's going to happen. You might have a good idea if you go here and you put that thing, what you're going to get. But really, patinas and dyeing can be a very unexpected process where something will pop in a color that you didn't even know. So what I tell you is when you're playing with this stuff, just embrace that chaos because between you and the materials, some interesting fun things are going to happen beyond your expectations. So let's talk about polymer uh, first and we'll talk about some of the other materials and things as we go along. But I'm a polymer gal. I make a lot of things out of polymer and I wanted that look of metal. So I first of all make my creations out of polymer and then the second thing is we're going to coat it with this prep coat. Now the, the prep coat is, is necessary for whenever you're going to make jewelry and that kind of thing because if you're wearing something that has a metal coating on top of a plastic surface, you know that it's going to kind of scratch through and ding as you go along, probably if it gets some hard wear. So the prep just allows this preparation to go on the top of your plastic and really grab to it so that all your metal coatings grab on nicely and everything stays together much more firmly and better than if you didn't use this. It's just a white glue-like substance and you're just going to sort of dab it on the surface. I try not to do a lot of nice strokes like this. I'm kind of doing a little dab, 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 dab because the, the metal coating and the patinas are going to work so much nicer when there's those little hills and valleys. So my suggestion is you make your piece out of polymer and if you work with paper clays, it also works tremendously with paper clays, epoxy clays, some of those other things, then coat it with your prep. All right, and then let that dry. If you want, you can have your oven set up and have it to a low temperature, like, you know, 200 degrees, and you can pop all of your pieces in and out while you're waiting for different things to set up. Now, when the patina process happens, you won't want to do that, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Otherwise, your oven can allow you to work more quickly. What I usually do is I wait and I get a bunch of different things that I want to experiment with to put my coatings and my dyes and all my fun stuff. And that way, while I'm painting one, the other one's drying and I've always got something fresh to work with. Then you don't have to wait and you can just run right through it, which is fun. So make your little prep thing, let that dry somewhere. Another thing the prep coat does is it lets you put a lot less metal coatings on. Here's the theory. You have a base substance, in this case polymer, and you're going to put a coating on top of it. The next step is going to be interacting with the metal itself. So if that wet coating goes on just the first coat and there's nothing underneath it, then you're getting right down to your polymer pretty soon and little gaps will show. That's why we put a prep coat and another coat of the metal coating on. And those things all dry before all the fun begins. So if, for example, I have the prep coat on this and now I've got a coat of metal. All that is, is again, taking your nice soft brush and dipping it into your metal coatings and you're just going to dab and brush a metal coating on. And that goes right over the prep once the prep is dry. And you can put one coating, two coating, three, as many as you want. I usually put two. The first coat leaves a few gaps along the way. The second coat covers up all the gaps. And you can cover with your brass. There's silver, there's copper, there's a number of other colors. You can coat whatever you want, or you can make a mismatch of the two. You can mix some copper and some silver together. All of these products play well together, not a problem. If you get creative, you can even add mica powders into your metals, or you can put a little drop of the dye into your metals, and now you have a pinkish silver. Just go nuts. See what happens. You pretty much can't ruin anything. If you start mixing and matching, it's all good. So just remember, base coat first and dry whether that's prep or metal or a combination of the two, that's your base coatings. Then all the fun begins from there. 
All right, so now um, I have got various pieces that I've covered with some of the metal. Here's one of the rules. There are very few rules to this. The first one was you're doing your base coats. Here's the other rule, and that's when it comes time to do the patina. The patina works best if it reacts with the moist metal coating. Okay, did you get that? Did you write that down? That's going to be on the quiz at the end. The patina works best with a moist metal coating. So after you have, say, silver, and you've covered that and it's dry, you're going to put a quick layer of silver before you put your patina on there. All right, so we want to make sure that that happens. So I'm going to go back to this brass that I did because this is going to have to do some little fun oxidation, and I want that to kind of be happening off on the side while we're working with our silver, so we'll get back to that. So I'm going to go back like we did, take my little brush, and I'm going to dab this whole thing with that one little coat. Now you've noticed that i got a tablecloth here because it gets messy, and it's got one of those plastic lined ones so I don't have gunk getting everywhere. And I'm working on ceramic tiles. Those are terrific because you can just work on them and get all gunky, and then afterwards you just use a wet wipe and get rid of all the residue. So that works out really well. All right, so I've got this coating now. For brass, I'm going to go to my patinas, and I've got a couple different ones here. I've got Green Gold Verdigris, I've got Tiffany Green Rust, I'm going to use that one, and I love these little cups. The little cups allows me to put just a little bit of stuff in the cup, work with it, and then keep going. Remember to shake everything really well before you use it. Stuff settles, we don't want that, you want to shake it up. I'm also using a lot of natural sea sponges that I've wrung, I've gotten wet and wrung all the wetness out so that I can pick up all of this patina and dabble it on the surface of my moist coating. Now, I don't like to do a little bit. I like to go overboard and get a whole lot. So sometimes I just kind of flood the whole thing and I put lots of patina on there. Because what's happening is nature. If you took something made out of metal and you stuck it out in the yard for, oh, I don't know, 10 years, it's going to get all rusted or that green color if it's made out of brass or copper. Well, that's what you're doing right now. But I want to accelerate the process, so I'm putting a lot on so it'll go fast. Once this happens, this is a chemical reaction between the patina and the metal. So you might say, well, how do I make it stop? Well, you kind of really don't. Once those two surfaces interact, it's happening at a molecular level, baby. It's science, and it's just going to do what it's going to do. So that's why I say embrace the chaos. This is going to turn, first of all, kind of sludgy. And you can see it's already beginning to look ridiculously sludgy. From sludgy goes to sewage, from sewage it goes to algae, then it has lovely moss, and then it's just a big giant green mess. That's totally what we want. It'll go from here to something like this. So you see that green mess? Don't even worry about it. That's what you want. This is the chaos, baby. This is nature happening. Once it gets this mess, then you, the artist, get to decide how much of that do you want, how many other colors do you want on there, how much more metal do you want to show through. I'm going to walk you through that whole process. But you just let this happen. So we're going to go put this little mess off to the side and let it do its thing. Now let me explain something about patinas because people are not always sure what that means. Patina is a natural reaction, like I mentioned, and it will do what it does. So if you have a piece of silver, which we're going to work on next, and you put a, a, the Tiffany on there hoping to get green, good luck with that because that's not what silver does. In nature, silver gets dark, and that's all silver does. So we're going to put a little layer of silver, and I'll show you instead of telling you. I'm going to put this little layer, and I'm just going a quick little dab, dab, dab. And while that's nice and moist, I'm going to come back with my darkening patina. Now, the darkening will darken any metal, because all metals darken, but silver only darkens. So we're going to just put a little bit of that in there. Sometimes you get little grungy bits on there. That's because I'm putting this right on top of that moist metal, and that metal is actually kind of pickling. Um, and so if you don't like that, it can rinse right off. Like, for instance, I could take this piece right now. See how it's getting nice and dark and a mess? I can just dump it in my water and rinse it off. Because it's not a dye. I don't have to worry about rinsing off the dye. It's a reaction, and that gets rid of any little crumbly bits. So if you're finding by putting your patina on with a brush or a sponge, you're getting little, um, like little linty bits, that's just that moist metal kind of balling up. You can just gently rinse it. I have a cup of water, and I usually dip it in that, and it works out just fine. Now see how that's aging? Silver darkens, and that's what the darkening does. If I was to do this on copper or something else like that, it would darken just as well. And sometimes that's the only look you want. So we're going to let this baby go over there and do its little thing. That's about all it will do. The darkening happens very quickly, whereas the green takes a while. We'll come back and visit Mr. Sludge, and you see we're getting a little bit of 
of pond scum happening there. That's the next step. And eventually it will get green and fun. Now you notice too that I am from time to time wiping off my hands. I am aware that I'm wearing gloves. But this is wiping off any excess of the patinas or the dyes or whatever I'm working with so I'm not inadvertently getting them where I don't want. If you do, just pretend like that's what you meant all along and go with it. It might take you to an interesting place. Okay, so let's review. We've put our base coat on and let that dry. We've put our metal coat on, let that dry. Now we've put a moist coat of metal and we've introduced the patina. There are various patinas. Darkening only gets darker, you remember that. Tiffany green and green gold verdigris. They're bright over here. These two are the ones that turn iron into rust and turn copper, brass, or bronze into that beautiful green. And each one of those has a slightly different green. And you might go, well, why are the two of them? Well, the green gold leans towards the yellowish end of the green spectrum, and the Tiffany green goes towards the more blue end of the spectrum. But both of them make iron rust because that's what iron does. So don't ask me how science works. That just does. And rust, I have a little trick for you with rust. I wanted to kind of go over that with you. When you put the iron on, you see that's very steel gray, irony gray. It's not very exciting, although it is kind of nifty. But to bring that iron, orangey rust on there, first of all, we're going to put another coat on. I think you kind of get the idea of that. Now this particular piece, I'll just warn you, it has the layers of brass and bronze underneath the iron tricky me because sometimes that helps to pull up some of those other colors so you get a little bit of greens and stuff in your brass so I kind of like that so I'm going to take the Tiffany green again and I'm going to put it back into my little sponge iron is a bit tricky it needs a little bit of a finesse and all that is is first of all you've coated it with that second coating it's still moist put it on a wet paper towel not soaping wet but moist and then I'm going to just flood it with the Tiffany green or the golden green verdigris or both. And I'm just going to get it like super duper saturated. And then I'm going to just tuck the rest of that paper towel up and over it and set that aside. So I've made like a little humidor for it. Iron takes a lot of moisture for that rust to happen. So if you just coat it and let it dry, you're not really going to get very much rust and you'll be sad. But just recoat it and then use that little humidor trick to have a little moist container of uh, wetness and it'll be just fine. You'll we'll see that it works really well. All right, so now I want to get into the next step of the game. Once you've started to put your patina on, then what? How do we go from grungy to something more interesting um, with most of that metal showing through. Now we haven't even played with any of the dyes yet. I'll come back to that in a minute. It's multiple steps. I don't want you to get confused. Basically it's just playtime and you really can't go wrong, but I'll kind of walk you through the steps and then we'll get really wild. So I'm going to show you something that I really like. This is a patina called Sky Sapphire. And when it's put onto the metal, it gets a really wonderful sky blue mixed with a more sapphire blue. So you can kind of see, I'll, I'll show you this one. This is what it looks like just boom on there. You can dab it on, brush it on, or mist it on. Uh, a lot of times I like to put the dyes or the patinas uh, or, well, you wouldn't do the metals, but the dyes or the patinas in a spritz bottle and then you can spritz it. But just remember that gets everywhere. So make yourself like a little box or something to put it in so you can come in the front and spray it, but you've got sides to it. So after it just sits around and, and gets its little reactive here, which is some light blues and some dark blues, what if I want it to look like this? Because you know I do. This is lovely, but I can't see any definition. It's just a big blue mess. Although sometimes I like it. How does this happen? All right, this is the whole next step. And this is reintroducing your metals on top of your patinas to pull that back out, that metal back out, so that you're not just sitting and looking at oxidation all the time. If you had a real metal thing, you would go over to your grinder or your buffer and you would remove from the surface of the metal any of the oxidation, any of the patinas that you didn't want. Well, if you have a very thin coating of metal on top of polymer or other material, you can't do that. You'll be right back down to the bottom color and that's no good. So instead of taking some away, we're going to add some back up. All right, so what I like to do with that is I like to get just a little bit of foil. The reason why I want to work on foil is it's kind of a shiny surface and that means I can dab things on there and slick them around and it's not going to dry real quickly. Um, it's just really easy to work with and most people have that lying around their house. I'm going to go ahead and take some copper which I have right here. And I'm going to work with my fingers. Now you can use brushes. I've used brushes before and I recently have found out that 
using your fingers with the gloves on is like so much more satisfying and fun. So I'm going to just take a little of my fingertip and I'm going to kind of smear it around in here so that I'm getting it a little thicker by letting some of the, uh, the water evaporate off of my metal coating. And then what I'm going to do with this, and I don't want a whole lot because I want it to be kind of a, almost a dry brush kind of feel where you're just rubbing something on, is I'm going to just gently rub this over the surface. So you see what I'm doing is I'm just taking a little bit of this stuff and I'm rubbing it. And if anything that's a high spot in the design is going to get that metal right on it. And if it gets too much, I can come back while it's still wet with a wet wipe and get rid of some of that. Now it grabs on pretty quickly, so you don't have a whole lot of time to do that, but you do have some of that ability to kind of get rid of some of that. So now take a look at how cool that looks. Doesn't that look so much better? Because now my blue is knocked down. I still have some of that blue there, but not a ton. And I don't have to stop there. What if I said, well, I kind of like that, but what if silver was in there too? Wouldn't that be fun? Or what if I mixed a little silver with a little bit of the copper so it wasn't like crazy silver, and I did a swipe or two of that over the surface just to give it another little pow of color. So you see how much layering you can do, and that's where all the fun is. And because you're using it on your finger and you've got layers, you've got almost like a crayon effect. It's not just slick over the surface like you've painted it on. You've actually rubbed it in there. And you don't have to be gentle with this either. You can get in there and just really rub. And if you scrape too far and uh-oh, don't worry, you can just recode it and replay. Who knows what will happen? Um, it might be something you never expected, right? Embrace the chaos. Sometimes, something like this, you look at it and go, boy, I really don't want to change a thing about it. Whatever happened in here, and I used a mixture of patina and dye, which we'll get to in a minute, it's just perfect in my opinion. I like it. It wasn't what I was expecting, but I'm embracing it. I love it. So we'll go do another one just so that you get the idea of it. Here's another little piece that had some patinas on there, and there's some dyes and things in there. And I, Like I said, we'll talk about that in a minute. And maybe I'll get back to my brassy color that I had, and we're just going to scoot over the surface of this and bring up those highlights and therefore reintroduce our golden color, our brassy color in there. Now there isn't gold because in order to, for it to really look like gold, you need real gold and that would be expensive. But just see how much more metal now that looks because some of that patina, which normally in nature would probably go down in a lot of those cracks and crevices because when people use metals, they're constantly kind of hand polishing by accident the surface of things and those patinas and stuff stay down in the cracks, which looks really wonderful. All right, this is another good example of that. This is something that has the sky sapphire all over the little bird. It's got the verdigris, uh, Tiffany green in on top of the brass area, and then there's some bronze there that didn't get anything on it just yet. It looks okay, but when I go back and use that little trick of adding gold on here, uh, or brass on here, and more silver on there, that just has a really wonderful aged metal colored metal look. Well, let's take a little look at how some of that patina is doing while we were doing other things. Look at, we definitely have algae going on there, bordering towards moss. Now, pretty soon, this is going to be completely covered with all green. You won't see any of those details. So many of you are going, well, okay, why don't you stop it right there? I can rinse it a little bit and see what happens, but I have found that personally, my preference is just let it go, do its whole thing, and then I can come back and play with it. And honestly, that usually takes a longer period of time than you think. The whole blooming process is anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour, depending on the heat of the day and how much you're controlling that process. But truly, I would suggest let everything sit overnight. Like, do all of your fun, but then visit it the next morning with the expectation that you're going to have to touch up some things. Because this, as I said before, is happening at a subatomic level. So you are doing, you know, quantum art here. So it's going down inside those metals. Blooming is still going to be occurring indefinitely, but you still will get some stuff the next morning. So if you've got it perfect, all in an hour time frame, expect that it's going to look different the next day. So just take that into consideration, and it's sort of a two-part fun. And it's kind of nifty. You get all the mad scientist stuff done in a night, uh, and then the next morning you get to look back at your creations and <laughs> enjoy what you've made. Let's also take a little peek at the rust and see what it's doing. So I think you can see here just a little bit of this delicious sort of burgundy color is happening in here. It's not a full orange yet, but it's really having fun. And I've noticed that there's pools of the patina still moist there, so I don't need to add any more patina. But if it looked like it was starting to dry out, you could add a bit more patina if you wanted to and pop it. Okay, so we've talked about the metal coatings, we've talked about the patinas. I've alluded to the dyes. 
Let's talk about that a little bit more. The dioxides are also a patina. They're a colored patina, and what they do is they interact at any stage of the game. I mentioned to you that you could put dye in with your metal coatings if you wanted to. No problem there. You can add dye into the patinas if you wanted to. More often than not, what I do is I put the coating on, I put the patina on, I add dye to the moist patina so everybody gets to work together, or I let all the patina do its thing, then I come back and I use dyes on top. We'll do both of those so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so let's take another little piece here. No, oh, this fish will do good. We're gonna start the uh, patina process with it, this, but we're gonna introduce dyes as well. So I'm gonna do that metal coating, remember? It's gotta work on moist metal. So I'm back to my little brassy bits and I'm giving them a quick coating. And I'm also not worrying too much. You notice I'm kind of touching them in the moist areas. It's, it's no problem. You can just give it a little touch up. Then let's get some, we could do darkening, but I'm gonna still go back to my little verdigris, Tiffany stuff because uh, that's the more dramatic. So I've got a little bit of that. I'm doing my sponge and I'm just moistening it. Wee! I like a lot of patina because what I'm going to do now, I'm trying to make it go all over because if you have spots that are no patina, you'll notice it. You can go back and do them again, but it's nice to get it all at once. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I have a white dye. Make sure you shake the dyes up because they settle. I'm going to take this white dye and I'm just going to be kind of messy here. What a surprise. I'm going to take a little bit of a paper towel to catch some craziness. And I'm going to take my white dye and I'm just going to flood it. I'm going a little slowly so I can kind of let it soak all over. Ooh, and it kind of turned out by itself just to go in the middle of the fish there. I'm sort of liking that. So I'm just letting that white dye just glomp all around. Then why don't I go back and I'll take a little chartreuse and I'll put a little of that also on the top, the tip of the bottom, and I'll just let it do its thing. So if you can see what I've got going on, I've got... The patinas are underneath all this mess, and then the dyes are on top, and we'll see what happens. Usually what happens is something like this. Here's a shell that I coated with bronze, and it was probably some bronze-copper combination. Then I put the patinas on. That's all the green you see, but then I just dumped white all over it while the patina was blooming, and then you get this very crusty uh, seagull dropping look, which I kind of think works for this sort of aquatic little thing. And then if I decided, well, that's way too much seagull dropping look, I can come back with copper and bronze and maybe mix the two together, make a nice little brown. And I can come back and with my finger rub over the surface and minimize some of that if I don't want quite so much dropping. All right, so see what we've got here? Just a little bit more there. But you see all that nice little white stuff. That's a very interesting and natural aged look. So if you like that, do it. Now here's the thing about the dyes. Is they're an intense color, but they're made to be very transparent. The reason is you want a very natural look. You want to be able to build up your layers of color. You don't want like an alcohol ink, which you can also use with this system. You don't want to just put an alcohol ink on the top and, oh man, I got purple. You want it to kind of soak down in the metal and maybe bloom a little bit or, or kind of have a watercolory speckled effect. So you can use a spritzer bottle and just spray it on there. You can use a brush, you can use um, a sponge, anything like that. Not a problem there, but expect to put several layers on. So when you put it on at first and go, wow, that's intense, you will probably lose up to half of that intensity by the time it dries. One way around that, like let's say you really, really wanted it to be intense. One of the colors that is not as intense as some people want is the yellow. It's more of a, uh, or almost a mustardy color, you can kind of see. That's not a bright sunshine yellow. It's more of a mustardy yellow. And, and when you dabble it onto your metal coating, it just kind of soaks in and it's gone. So this was originally coated in uh, the brass. And in order to get it like super duper yellow, I just took it, put some of the, the dye in here and dropped it right in and let it sit overnight. And it's soaked in, so it is just freaking yellow now. So again, I can do the same thing and use my little metal coatings here to add, in fact, let's get some silver, add another little bit of shine up here so you can really see uh, the, the details. But just see the contrast you get. So don't be afraid on something like this to keep working it. Now I have all the yellow in the world. And I might go, well, geez, I certainly wish that there was some green in there for some mystery reason. So now I have green dye. And I can take my paintbrush and just manipulate this just a little bit. And you can use water. I would recommend actually using um, distilled water because tap water often has some chlorination in it. And that's in itself a patina, but whatever. So I'm going to go in here and start dabbing in. 
just a little bit of this green right on top of everything else. And again, using my water, almost like a watercolor effect that I can just smooth it around and make it soak in there in a very natural sort of way. So take a look at what that looks like. You see, layer upon layer upon layer. And if I suddenly decide I hate all of that, I let it dry, put some silver on it, and do something else. So you're... So you just really are never done until you say you're done. You can have layer upon layer, and sometimes that's a neat thing. If you had a silver, like we mentioned before, with a little bit of brass underneath, then when you put darkening on the silver, it gets dark, but if you put Tiffany on, then those little bits of green are going to pull through. So you get some really interesting effects. So this one can just keep going and going and going until you like it. And, and Will, speaking of will like it, let's go back and revisit our crazy other stuff. Lovely, 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 huh? We're really getting some fun in there. Now, another little trick I like to do at this stage, if you wanted to, you can even put some of the metal right back on top. What this does, uh, it's going to bloom right through there. You're not going to be able to save that look very much, but it minimizes the intensity of the bloom. So instead of this being an entire green piece, you are still going to have some of that metal showing through even in the patina process. So really, like I said, you can't go wrong. There's nothing you can do that would go wrong. And, and while we're at it, uh, let's put some more dye on this one, just again to give you a little bit more feel of how this dye is going gonna, is gonna to work. I'm going to go with the purple this time because purple is really fun. And I've been using a lot of the brass. Some of the darker metals, like the iron and the bronze, have a little harder time for the dye uh, because they're such a dark metal to start with. But I'll show you a trick in a minute, and I think you'll like it. Now, you see, as I'm doing this, it's kind of getting muddy. That's because all of those things that I'm working with are still wet. The patina is still moist. The metal is still moist. So it gets a little muddy in there, which makes for an interesting effect. So now I've got that all on there. I might go, oh, that's a little more than I want. Let's come back with my sponge and pick some of that off. And now we'll just let it keep doing its thing and we'll see what happens. It will look gross before it looks awesome. So just know that's part of the embracing the chaos process. It's going to look all funky funk. And then you do that fun little schmear, 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 and you've got something really amazing. All right, we'll put that back down. Let's take a look at our, our rust again and see what it's doing. Ah, uh, we have even more burgundy starting there. And if you, if I wanted to, you can kind of see the staining over here. That's some of the, the rusting process, too. If I wanted to, I could dump even a bit more of the patina on at this stage. Or I can put some yellow on there or some orange or something to change the rusty look. So it's all up to what you want to do. All right, so you kind of get the idea of where we're going with the patina, right? And you're getting the idea of what we're doing with adding multiple layers of metal, right? All sounds pretty good. Well, let's talk about a couple of other things now. Um, I want to talk to you about putting this dyes directly on polymer. Well, I mean, there's a lot of things you can coat polymer with, right? But this stuff works fabulous as well. I'm going to show you a couple of pieces here. So that gives you a, a couple of fun choices. Um, this one is just a piece of ultralight. And ultralight is a very chalky, porous kind of polymer clay. So it works really well because the dyes just grab right into it. But then this is just regular polymer. And you can see it's got like blues and stuff all around there. These dyes are one of the things that work well right on top of polymer. So I'm going to take, oh, let's see, I'll take this brush. I'll go back to my purples. And if you want to make this even more strong and solid, you could take your sealant, the clear sealant, mix some of that in the purple, which I already did, so that now there is the sealer in the dye, which means just that it's going to grab all that much better right onto the surface. So I'm just going to put this right on the top and let it swoop into the circles, now the re, uh, into the impressions. The reason I like this is it gets thick and thin spots, so that it ends up with kind of a very porcelain effect, especially if you then take your wet wipe and blot over the surface while you're dyeing it. So take a look at what you get here. Is now you've got a, an interesting little dye pattern, which is different than what you could get with acrylic, which is typically what you would use to color uh, a, a polymer clay after it's baked, um, or alcohol inks. Alcohol inks just grab everywhere. This kind of puddles into the depressions, and you can even make that top a little bit lighter, and that looks good. And who knows what else you'll do to come up with a fun solution. And again, this is a darker clay. I did the same thing here. You can see some of it in the in the ridges here. So experiment a bit. See what you come up with. That's pretty fun. Okay, so now let's talk other substances, other substrates. What else can we put all this stuff on? When you're talking about the metal coating, it goes on everything. If you were making a giant set because you were 
a costume and set designer for an opera, say, and you needed a giant door that was made out of iron. Obviously, you don't want to be lugging in 50 tons of iron door onto your set. So you'd make it out of styrofoam, you'd cover it with iron, and you'd spray it with the patina. Now you have the look of an ancient, very, very heavy door that's actually made out of styrofoam. Works great on that. Paper clay or paper boxes or paper of any kind works fantastic. Wood, uh, unglazed ceramic, fantastic. Just about any surface you want. Rocks, just everything under the sun, including fabrics and leather. This is the brass swelling it with the darkening on leather. And the cool thing about this is it doesn't crack. It is flexible and supple. So those of you who do costume design or doll design can maybe see some real interesting potential for this. So this goes right on there. Another thing that is really good is using this for when you've created something out of polymer clay and it burns, oh my, or you chose the color that when you look at it again, you think, what in the world was I thinking? So what you want to do is just then coat it. This was one of the stained glass pieces that I do that burned, so I just coated it with the swell again, and now it looks like a brass plaque. So if you are a polymer person, or anything for that matter, that creates sculpturally, if something goes wrong in the coloring or the drying process and it doesn't look like what you expected, Go crazy, put stuff right on top of it. If you're an assemblage artist and you have a doll head and a wooden box and a glass thing here, you can paint all of that and add your colors and your patinas to have a finished look that looks like the entire thing was made from metal. If you don't want all of it to be made from metal, you can get small pieces and add it to other things or paint just areas that you want. So lots of possibility. All right, let's also talk about metal itself. This whole system was made to go on metal. Uh, that is what it excels at. The dyes are one of the very best ways to permanently dye metal different colors. And these are the top artist quality too. This is the good stuff. So what you're going to do on metal, now we're talking jewelry mostly for those of us who are watching this, and that's a little trickier because jewelry gets a lot of wear. If you were making a sculpture, you could add your patinas, your dyes on there, put a coating on there, and most people aren't going to come around licking it, touching it, or wearing it, so it's going to look great. But jewelry goes through a lot of wear. So you are going to want to make sure that you prep your metal properly and that you seal your metal, metal properly. This is just like a, a copper finding. And I use some steel wool to, in fact, I'll do it right on this uh, brass bracelet because it's the same thing. This is just a number one steel wool and I'm just kind of scruffing it all up like this. Now if you have a sandblaster you can do that too but probably most of you don't have that in your in your house. So I'm just using it to get rid of any surface imperfections and add a little bit of tooth to the metal. And of course now I have little filings everywhere. But what that does is it prepares that surface with a little bit of microscopic scratchings so that the patinas, the dyes, have some place to grab. Patinas work terrific. You can take uh, a piece of raw metal. Now remember this isn't working on metal and filigree that you have that has been clear coated and many of the pieces of jewelry have been. It needs to be the raw stuff. But you can take something like this, take your little pot of dye, uh, not dye, sorry, patina, and just plop it right in and let it sit there for a little while. Then take it out, set it on a paper towel, ignore it. And that means that that patina, because this is not moist, that patina is going to soak in and grab and darken but it takes a little bit longer. If you have a heat gun, you can take your metal and you can heat this first and then the dyes go on it so much better if it's preheated. That just opens up the pores of the metal, gets rid of any surface imperfections like hand oils or that kind of thing, and then the dyes have that more open porous metal surface to jump right into. I have another little trick for you too when you're working on top of metal with dye. You saw how much the, the dyes were able to be watered down with water. They're reactive to water. So you're going to want to mix those half and half. You want to take uh, some of the sealant, and I think we talked about this a little bit, but it doesn't hurt to say it again. Take some of the sealant, about a 50-50 ratio, and put some of your dyes right in there. So let's get a little bit of this. Remember, shake, shake, shake. Put that right in. Whoa, there we go. That's plenty. We got a little on there, but that might look good. Let's see what it does. Embrace the unexpected. Embrace the chaos. So now I'm going to come back with my brush and just mix that all up so that my sealer is already in my die so that when I put this right over my metal, it's going to grab. All right. Now, of course, this is on a sort of a brassy metal, so you're not going to see it as well, but I'll put it on a silvery one in a minute. But you see how now it's soaking down into those little ridges and it's going to grab in there. And you'll put another coating of sealant when you're all done with it, but that'll kind of give you a little look. Let's put a little on this and see what it does. 
right over the surface. You see how it goes down in there? And it really looks great. And then I'll just let this dry. And when it's all done, I'll put this here where my fingers aren't so messy. You see how it's kind of down in there? It's not going to like dye it like as if it was a, a porous material and it went right in, but you're going to get a nice natural look. So if you're expecting to have a, a solid blue, that's not what this does as well. It does more of a mottled natural look. So embrace that look and you'll get exactly what you want. Just let that dry completely and you'll be able to then recoat it and it should work fantastic for your jewelry needs. Another thing you can do is you can put the metal coatings right on top of your metal. They're made to do that. So let's say you have, this is a brass and you didn't want it to be solid brass. You wanted some silver in there too. You can brush or smear some of that on there and you're going to be able to change the look. And I'm going to keep rubbing it so that it gets a little bit more of a natural look on there. So see, now I'm starting to change the look of it. On this one, you can see I've put some brass on the copper, and I could put the silver on the copper as well. And this is a nice little hodgepodge because it shows you some of the, the uh, sapphire, the sky sapphire patinas are happening over here. This is one of the dyes, the green dye, Kelly green dye. They've got some brass up here. Now I've got silver. So it's a really fun little sampler of things that you can do with the metals. One last little trick with metals that I want to show you. I think you'll have a, a blast with that. And that's a, a specific technique for making an interesting pattern. Can you see this pattern on here? Didn't that look lovely? That was obviously just our little brass wristband cleaned up. And then all you're doing with this, let me move some of this stuff so we have some space, is you're taking a piece of saran wrap, a plastic wrap, just good old kitchen plastic wrap, and I'm going to Take some color, and I've already got purple in there. Let's see if there's any color that I don't have. Well, I don't have the red. And I've mixed it half and half with my, that might be orange, no, that's red, with my sealer, and I'm dabbling that all over the surface of my metal. Then I'm just taking that saran wrap, that plastic wrap, and wrapping it on the surface. Because what that does is it grabs your dye in weird little funky patterns. And when that's all dry and pulled off, you get all those little patterns. So I'll show you that again, and then I'll wrap it back up again, and you get this wonderful little wrinkly pattern. So that's got to dry for an hour or so before that's ready to be unveiled. You will definitely need to seal that when it's done. Okay, let's talk about sealing. Sealing. I already explained to you that we have the sealer, and what's neat about this sealer is it's a matte finish. Matte means that there's not any shine involved. So if you've got something that's rusty looking, uh, like something like this, you don't want to put a lot of shine on that. I mean, you've got a little bit of metal showing through, but a glossy shine would just make it look fake. So you want to put a sealer on there that preserves the look without adding shine. You can't just wear it without it if you're going to wear it. Now, if you're just going to set it on your table, you can let it be all natural. That's no problem. But if you're going to wear it, that oxidation is a surface thing. Rust happens on the surface. So that means when you wear it, those surfaces rub off, and then now your nice little clothes are full of rust or verdigris or whatever else, and that's kind of awkward. So you definitely want to seal it with that. Shake it up really well and use the sealer that comes with the set if you like. If you already work with other metals and you have Renaissance wax or Permalax spray or PYM2 spray or uh, Krylon spray, any of those things work well too. They go on metal, they will go on this metal. If you have exposed polymer, do be careful to pick something that is not reactive with polymer. Uh, polymer doesn't take to all varnishes, so the PYM2 is a very good one to use because that's good for all surfaces. But do make sure you seal it. I would say wait a good four to six hours, even a full day if you can, before you seal it because some of that reaction is still happening. There's moisture still trapped in the piece. You can put it in the oven to hasten that if you like what you see. But do remember that when you put things in the oven, they stop or slow down dramatically the, the patina process. So when you had something really fun going on and you put it in the oven, that may stop it and it may make it look a little less fun than it could. So once everything is all done and dry, then you can put your sealer on there. And I really do recommend putting it in a spritzer bottle and misting over the surface. If you go back with your finger, with the brush, with whatever, and dab over the dyes, they are likely to react to the moisture and move around unless you put sealer in them already. 
and then you can go. And a little comment about sealer, you can keep working over the sealer. Like if you put the sealer in the dye and then you feel like putting something else on top of it once it's dry, not a problem. It won't go through and interact with the thing that's sealed, but you can work right over the top of it. It doesn't mean you can't work on it anymore. All right, so seal your piece after it's dried thoroughly, I would say a good six to 12 hours at least, and then keep on working if you want or add more sealer to make a really good strong finish. Okay, so I think you can see all the range of fun business that's to be had. Let's look at a few things that we left percolating and see where they look from, na uh, from now, from where we left them. Here's our little happy fish that has white and chartreuse, and you can kind of see some of the different reactions that's happening. A lot of that green is the patina reacting with the brass. You can see some of the white bits and a more intense green where that chartreuse was. That's going to be kind of interesting, and then we'll do all that schmear schmear on top. And this one is pretty much getting dried out how now we have this crazy goo happening and just to remind you when you are finished with the goo process you come back with the rubbing on of the metals and you see you get some fun stuff there that's not as shiny as it could be because that's still wet so that means that patina is immediately changing the surface of your metal and keep playing with that until you have it something like where did that go something like this when it's completely dry then that shiny metal will be just as happy as could be. Let's take a look at our rusty thing. See how it's rusting? Ooh, look at that. We have got some really, really good rust going on. And that will just keep on going. I could drop in a little bit of the yellow if I wanted to intensify it. I can keep playing with that. Our metals are all looking good. Everything's over there drying. Doesn't that look great? All right, wasn't that exciting? Now at the end of all of your mad scientist fun, all that's left to do is clean up. And I say fooey on the cleanup. Just take your gloves off, Go do something else and come back the next day and keep playing. Just make sure, though, that the lids are all on tightly, that your brushes are rinsed out, that anything that could dry out has a lid on it or it is just left to dry out. Which brings us to another topic, cleanup, which is the same topic but slightly different because how do you clean all this stuff up? Everything is water-soluble and it's soap and water wash up. Now, like acrylic paints, once the metal clay dries, I'm sorry, the metal coating dries, it's dry. It doesn't reanimate with water. So when it's dry, it's done. I would suggest that you let all of those things dry in their cups. Then they can be disposed of. You don't want to dump liquid things down your drain or outside in the grass. But once they dry, they're fine to throw in the trash. Everything is non-toxic non-harmful, very, very low to no odor. I've specifically chosen this line so that those of us who craft in a little small room don't have to be overwhelmed by odors, don't have to worry about health issues. This is all great stuff. Wash with soap and water and you're good to go. However, I will say that these dyes are very permanent when they get on your clothing. And if you're not wearing gloves, you will have little blue fingers for a couple of days until that all wears out. So wear your gloves, wash up when you're done, let things dry and dispose of them properly. But basically keep this out for a while because you're going to want to play a little bit more. So I'm loving what I'm doing. I'm hoping you will too. In fact, I am just sure you're just going to have a swell time with this stuff. <laughs>